Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this video this morning. I hope that you're doing good and we're going to be looking at what is going on across the Atlantic. That coupled with uh, what we could see happen as we head into next week, we'll be looking at the ensemble tracks for some of our models in terms of seeing potential development. And later today, the Climate Prediction Center will be updating their Global Tropics Hazards Outlook Map. So in my evening updates, I'll be covering that. But let's get straight into what's currently happening and at a wide view there we can see that there is some convection out there associated with a couple of troughs and the front similar story out in the main development region and there's been some scattered showers and thunderstorms across portions of the lesser antilles mostly for the windward islands and even for other areas as well parts of northern south america let's zoom further into the caribbean here we can see that there is some activity across some areas and so this morning, for portions of the Windward Islands, which uh, include Dominica, going toward uh, parts of Martinique, and even down through the Grenadines, going to Grenada especially, uh, and portions of Tobago, the easterly side of Tobago, and even for some spots in Trinidad, there's been some rainfall activity. So that rainfall activity is likely to continue at times uh, with some heavy downpours. And uh, I've even seen some comments from you guys about some flooding that has taken place. So please stay safe. And unfortunately, this is what happened happens at times when there's a lot of heavy rainfall, especially in a short amount of time that can result in flooding. Going up to the Leeward Islands though, Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, even toward Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, Ceiba, St. Eustatius, there hasn't been anything too much. Guadeloupe, similar story, there hasn't been anything too crazy within the area. And then uh, going over toward Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, a bit of shower activity nearby. Down into the ABC Islands, as we look toward uh, Bonaire, there's been some rainfall activity, even for the most easterly side of Curacao. And then uh, much not happening for the Dominican Republic and Haiti, up to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands. Much not happening for the Cayman Islands. A bit of shower activity across portions of eastern Jamaica, as well as eastern Cuba, and then over in portions of Central America. So that's that is the activity uh, right now across the area. We're still seeing that there are some showers, but if we notice uh, over the past couple of days, this activity has been decreasing over in the vicinity of Central America, which is good, allowing for those floodwaters to recede and for those cleanup efforts to be ongoing uh, in wake of all the flooding that has recently happened there. Now let's look at the rainfall forecast for today. There you can see that uh, as the map becomes more colorful, seeing more of the shades of oranges, reds, burgundies, purples, a lot more heavy rainfall is expected. So across portions of Belize, the Keys, the Bay Islands of Honduras, Honduras itself, Guatemala, and then down into other areas such as uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, there could be some periods of heavy downpours as we head throughout today. And then of course for Northern South America, we already saw where there some activity but uh, there could be some more showers across parts of Colombia and Venezuela as we progress through the day especially going into the afternoon ABC Islands there could be some heavy downpours at times that's already happening for portions of Bonaire and uh, for the Guyanas there may be some showers popping up here and there then for parts of Trinidad going to Tobago and through most of the lesser Antilles there could be some shower activity at times through today uh, maybe some heavy downpours or uh, just some intermittent showers so for Grenada, the Grenadines, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe, even going up to St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Ceiba, St. Eustatius, Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Barthelme, and then for the Virgin Islands uh, and Puerto Rico and even the easterly tip of the Dominican Republic could experience some rainfall as we head through today as well. But islands such as Antigua and Barbuda, Montserrat, and even portions of the eastern side of uh, Guadeloupe go in towards sections of Barbados. There may not be as much rainfall. Fall, but this is a forecast here so there could be changes some portions of some islands which are not expected to, ex uh, to experience rainfall may actually experience rainfall today because uh, this is a forecast here and it is not always easy to pinpoint exactly where is going to be receiving rainfall especially with uh, the disorganized activity we're seeing in the southwest uh, the southeast caribbean rather as we head over into portions of the bahamas turks and caicos islands some showers may pass through nothing much similar story as we head to portions of Cuba. Cuba and even for Jamaica, especially over in the east. And then as we head toward the Cayman Islands, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, and even
moving up into Florida or not seen where much is expected. So things will be on the drier side and things have been on the drier side for some areas. And uh, once these fronts are going to be making their way out of the U.S. and being a bit stronger, then they'll be helping to increase that rainfall chance across portions of the southeast U.S. and even for the northwestern Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at what the ensembles have to show for GFS and Euro as it relates to development as we head into next week. But firstly, we want to go on to this uh, graph here. This is depicting the tracks of all our tropical cyclones this hurricane season in the Atlantic basin. So a lot of these systems, as we can see here, have remained offshore, uh, moving west off Africa as tropical waves develop and making their way up and out. And we've really dodged some bullets this year. For example, with Hurricane Lee, which rapidly strengthened into a Cat 5, if that was in the Caribbean, that would be a completely different story. But timing of all that troughing across the U.S. and uh, an area of high pressure not being so dominant, because with a dominant high, we have have more of these systems headed into the Caribbean, headed toward the West, but that has not been the case for uh, much of the hurricane season, which has allowed for a lot of these systems to actually stay out and not be a problem for anywhere, at least at peak intensity, because we've had systems such as Franklin and Brett, which have moved in Franklin, uh, made landfall in Hispaniola as a tropical storm, then it quickly strengthened into a major hurricane out in the open waters of the Atlantic. And uh, Idalia formed it in the Western Caribbean, and made its way up into the eastern gulf and it rapidly strengthened before landfall as well so we've only had a couple of systems in the caribbean and of course other storms such as philippe and tammy have made a very close approach even moved in before moving back out and over in the western caribbean here we can see this sort of void in terms of not seeing anything actually make its way across the area again that is the work of the el nino but also this is an el nino season of course so with that Usually there is below average activity. However, the above average temperatures have canceled out the effects of El Nino to some degree, but uh, we've definitely seen the effects of El Nino in terms of these storms remaining out. And could we see Vince and Whitney? Those are the final two names on the list. It is certainly possible that we could see at least one more named storm as they're going to be heading through November. And I wouldn't 100% rule out something developing in December because there have been offs season cyclones and I mean the sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic are still pretty warm so with other conditions being conducive even for a short amount of time we could see a brief uh, system try to form out of there who knows but going into next week let's take a look at what the ensemble tracks have to show first for Euro so this is as we head out into Thursday evening we're going 10 days out from now and we're seeing some of these ensemble tracks picking up on an area of low pressure forming in the Western Caribbean and as we have been seeing recently with the model uh, that big moisture increase is expected, which would eventually uh, affect areas such as Central America, even areas that have recently been pounded by days of heavy rainfall. So we could see something else try to form here. We're seeing the uh, Euro ensemble members actually picking up on an area of low pressure forming. As for GFS, GFS has been consistently showing that we could see a tropical storm or even a hurricane develop in the Western Caribbean. And we're seeing that there's quite a bit of ensemble members which are in agreement that, hey, an area low pressure could form we could see development for sure at least a tropical storm and that isn't impossible at all once conditions are going to be conducive for the right amount of time so we could definitely see formation over in the western caribbean next week but as of right now nothing has been marked by the national hurricane center and if anything's going to be marked most likely that's going to be this weekend maybe early next week or we won't see anything marked at all so we'll have to wait and see for that but i really think that there is a chance we could see something try to get itself together Regardless of that, big moisture increase is expected and we don't need a tropical cyclone to actually result in a lot of heavy rainfall and flooding. Recent floods in Central America have proven that. So even with that, that could cause some problems. But of course, I'm here to keep you guys posted as per usual. And again, my evening update is going to be covering the latest forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, uh, the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook. So that's it for now, though. And I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.